what video or recording is perfectly innocent, but becomes terrifying when you look into the story behind it. The TV show The Willis Family that had two seasons on TLC. The dad was super controlling of his 12 kids and wife and just gave off creepy vibes. I was shocked though to find out that he had been raping his own daughters for years with the oldest saying that molestation started when she was 3. All 12 children were homeschooled and did dance and wrestling but only with each other. They were so isolated from other people. He was also strict about his daughters saving themselves for marriage even though he was raping them. There's a clip from the show of him discussing all the kids building houses on his property so his future grandchildren would be close by. It's like he was trying to set up his next victims for when his daughters grew up. The worst part is the mom knew for a while but didn't do anything about it. It was a family friend that ended up reaching out to authorities which led to his arrest and sentence of 40 years. It's super creepy to see clips of the show knowing what was happening behind closed doors. The song and Marie sings in All Dogs Go to Heaven about wanting a loving home. While recording, the voice actress, Judith Barcy kept crying. Her home life was awful. Her father was abusive to both her and her mother and would often threaten to kill or hurt them. Judith died before the movie came out. She and her mother were killed by her father and then he killed himself. She was 10. What about the video that was on Tosho where there were two girls and the dad tied them in a playful way to the bed. But it was really like a pedo tutorial on how to do this to kids so the pedo could do what they wanted. Tosh said on the show it was creepy and the guy's whole YouTube channel was weird. A few months later the FBI or something investigated it and it turned out the guy was a pedo abusing the girls and exploiting them on his kid's YouTube channel. That video looked creepy innocent until you find out the real story. One day I saw a news report on a woman's body dropped in a lake. The police were still looking for the body. They interviewed a man who said that could have been someone's mother a few hours later they find out the body was that man's mother. There was a picture of a 16-17 year old girl floating around very briefly years back. It was just an innocent picture of some teen posing for a photo. Look deeper into it and it turns out the girl was from a rich family and had a drug problem. She got into an argument with her dad, stormed out and stole his car, did a bunch of coke, then crashed into a bridge going hella fast. She was killed instantly. As sad as that is, the fed up part is why the photo was being passed around. Somehow the photos taken as the scene of the crash found their way online and horrifically cruel people decided to send out fake memorial emails to this girl's family. Opening the email seemed innocent enough. A heartfelt subject about how terrible this was. A photo of this girl before she died. But scroll any further and there were the pictures of her corpse with messages taunting her loved ones. I found one of these messages and her body was not in one piece. It was mangled. Seeing your daughter's corpse is one thing. Seeing it in that state is something else. But to have people playing with it online for no other reason than to hurt you is unthinkable. Carmen Miranda's last performance. Carmen Miranda, the famous singer and dancer of the 1940s. Performed on the Jimmy Durante show on the 4th of August 1955. At the end of her performance she briefly dropped to her knee but popped back up afterwards. She later died of massive heart attack that same night. This video of former officer Craig Pyre giving safety advice that was created in response to the murder of Kara Knott. HTTPS. Yauta BCRCLJ6 Atobic. Pyre had murdered Knott by luring her to her isolated area just off the freeway. This video of a Russian influencer, in her birthday party at a swimming pool she had the idea of pouring dry ice in the water for the visual effect. Three people died intoxicated because of all the carbon dioxide. News. IDK about innocent. But if you cut out the ending, the video leading up to Bud Dwyer's suicide seems so normal. Just another guy on TV getting harassed by reporters over the latest controversy. If it had cut there, you could air it on the evening news and nobody would know someone died less than 20 seconds later. Just, disturbing. These teens found a suitcase in Seattle by the sea while filming a TikTok. Only to discover later the suitcase contained two bodies. There was a celebrity in the UK called Jimmy Savile who presented many BBC programs in the 1970s, especially ones with a younger audience. He did a campaign for seat belt awareness and was a patron for many charities for the vulnerable. He was probably the most loved celebrity for decades. 
After his death he was revealed as the country's worst child sex offender who used his fame and proximity to children to abuse them. Any picture or TV footage of him near kids was probably shot just before or after he'd assaulted someone. This video of a band performing in a bar in Thailand. Minutes later, the entire place catches fire and more than 60 people are dead. Also, the band's name is Burn and the song they're singing is Linkin Parks in the end. Hi, Jack Neal. Back in the 90s, there was a popular hit by a band named Soul Asylum called Runaway Train. Younger folks may have heard it on classic rock stations. It's a soft power ballad with slightly melancholy lyrics, which was pretty typical for the 90s. The video is not typical. I can never not cry when I watch it. It features the pictures of over 30 missing children. There were several versions for different regions and countries. The Australian version features missing backpackers who were later found to be murdered by a serial killer. 26 children were found because of this song but murders were also solved because of it, while at least one runaway was found and forced back into abuse. At least one child in the video is still unaccounted for. The comment section is heartbreaking, with the top replies from family and friends of those featured. It's a complex tangle of optimism and bleakness, lurking beneath an innocuous emo song. Tommy Cooper death on stage. People was thinking he was still acting when he collapsed on the ground dead, for a heart attack. DR, NASA sports medicine videos. He's one of the docs for USA Gymnastics and has, had, a ton of videos on his website of him demonstrating various sports med techniques and treatments. It looks professional on the surface. The thing is some of his techniques are totally made up. Some techniques he demonstrated on video he would digitally penetrate finger, young girls in the vagina and anus. He performed these techniques on hundreds of young girls under the guise of it being for their health and sometimes directly in front of their parents. Sometimes while aroused, watch Athlete A on Netflix if you want the story on this scumbag. Maybe not that innocent to begin with but extra creepy knowing the truth. A video of an African grey parrot named Bud saying don't f I'm shoot. He witnessed his owner, Martin Durham, being murdered by his wife. I Ike Bud also mimicked both sides of verbal fights, alternating between to a male and female voice. I believe the parrot testified in court. The wife was convicted. This isn't really terrifying, but it always gives me the creeps to hear it. It's a video of Alessandro Romorishi, who was a castrato singer. This is him singing in 1902, I believe, and he was in his 40s. If you don't know what a castrato is, Basically they used to be really popular to use in opera and other genres of music way back a few centuries ago, mostly to use in place of female singers. A castrato is a male singer who has been castrated before puberty. Basically, if a young boy had a high voice in choir or something along those lines, they would be castrated while young so that they wouldn't lose their abilities to reach the high pitches because their voices wouldn't drop due to puberty. Honestly, the recording completely creeps me out because it was such an awful thing in the history of opera. And it's so creepy that only a little under a hundred years ago did the last official castrato die. Thousands of boys died while being castrated or after. And this recording is absolutely haunting. Chris Watts pleading for the return of his pregnant wife and daughters. He confessed to killing them all the following week. In 2016, YouTube Brittany Louise Taylor uploaded a video titled I'm engaged and pregnant. She talks about a man she had met on Tinder, and that she is now pregnant. After the baby was born, it emerged that this man was never in love with her, but was just pretending. He had targeted her for human trafficking and had deliberately got her pregnant in order to sell her baby. With that information, it's really scary how he looks at her at the end of the video, and how he treats her in other clips on her YouTube channel. Fortunately she escaped the situation and got a restraining order. The scariest thing about this is that he didn't go to prison, and went on to impregnate and marry another Instagrammer, who has since disappeared from social media. Be careful when you swipe right. Kids, if you want to find out more about the story Brittany has a book called A Sucky Love Story. It's badly written but fascinating. Eater, her. her son is also safe. They live with her mum in Arizona. Next door neighbor security footage of a disturbingly calm Chris Watt loading up his work truck in the morning with the bodies of his recently strangled pregnant wife and two young children. To dispose of them. Absolutely effed up. 
Columbine Senior Yearbook Photo 1999 where the shooters who are doing gun signs at the camera just weeks before the shooting took place here is the photo. Look in the far upper left of the image. A popular 18-year-old CSGO YouTuber uploaded a reveal of the supercar he had just bought. His Steam account containing around $100,000 of in-game items was banned six months later, causing him to have a serious mental breakdown. Two months after his ban he drove this car 100 miles per hour down an LA San Diego highway the wrong way in an attempt to commit suicide. He crashed head on into a van, killing himself, a mother and her 12 year old daughter. The last Twitch stream of Wreckful, he jokingly comments about if it's all a simulation and maybe you get out when you die. He asks if he should try his luck to chat. You can tell he is glancing at his balcony a few times. He jumped from it sometime later. It gets even darker when you learn about his past. His older brother committed suicide as well. Recent Britney Spears TikTok and all that video she posted. I am not a fan myself tbh. But as a person who doesn't know much about her, it felt weird and somewhat awkward to watch it. Which I read the comment to see that there are people saying like how she's asking for help through all these videos. The video of the Boston Marathon bomber going to a supermarket to casually buy milk after blowing up two homemade bombs at the race. F him. How about the episode of the Cosby show when he makes his secret BBQ sauce and everyone gets really groggy and tired and he tries F-ing his wife. The 2007 movie Waitress, it's about a small town waitress with a passion for baking who struggles with an abusive husband and an unwanted pregnancy while trying to find happiness and love. It's a sweet and really heartwarming film, and it has some big name stars Kerry Russell, Nathan Fillion, and E. Griffith. But most notably to this post, Adrienne Shelley. Adrienne Shelley was not only a co-star and the writer for Waitress, but this movie was also her directorial cinematic debut as a director. When released in 2007 it was very well received for its heart and unique directorial style. However, Adrienne Shelley was murdered in 2006, three months before it debuted. Her death was first ruled as a suicide by hanging before further investigation showed she was murdered by a stranger who staged her suicide. Waitress was the only film she would get to direct. The Adrienne Shelley Foundation now exists to support women filmmakers. Continuing Shelley's legacy. Honestly typing this up is making me a bit teary. Waitress is one of my all time favorite movies. And a great musical as well. And losing someone like Adrienne Shelley just shows how cruel the world can be sometimes. This video from June of 2012 showing a 20 year old man playing Dance Dance Revolution at an AMC theater in Connecticut. He is being unknowingly recorded from behind by some people who spotted him and they are both mocking him and admiring his skills at the game. Six months after this video was taken, the young man in the video, Adam Lanza, would shoot his mother four times in the head while she slept. He would then drive his car to the nearby Sandy Hook Elementary School, where he would murder six adults and 20 children who were between the ages of 6 and 7. During the shooting, he yelled abuse and obscenities at his victims. One student reported that he heard one of his classmates cry out help me, I don't want to be here, and Lanza replied well, you're here. Upon hearing the sirens of responding police units, Lanza pulled out a 10mm pistol and shot himself. No motive for the shooting was ever found. Back in the 90s, there was a segment on the Jenny Jones show where a guy, Scott Amateur, confessed that he had a crush on a male friend, Jonathan Schmitz. Schmitz was so embarrassed by the appearance that he shot and killed Amager three days after the taping. Mother Love by Queen. Freddie got most of the song recorded, but Brian has the last verse. At the studio, Freddie said he was tired and would finish the rest some other time. He never did, resting at home during his final days. Brian came back later after Freddie's death and finished the last bit. That kid who did anime reviews and ended up making a video about his big future plans. He ended up killing his entire family and tried shooting up his old high school before he got caught. Also Elliot Rodgers old videos are just eerie. Tears in Heaven Eric Clapton. It's a song written to his four. One stroke two year old son who died after falling 53 stories out an apartment window that was accidentally left open. In 2017 there were two girls, 13 and 14, who were killed in an Indiana park. The murders remained unsolved. The last snapshot that one of the girls posted shows an unknown guy in hoodie approaching them. 
that one reaction gif of the African man on the boat laughing. The man is Idi Amin, the cruelest, most violent despot in the history of Uganda, if not the entire African continent, and he's laughing at the interviewer asking him if it's true that he said that Hitler didn't kill enough Jews during the war, he did, in fact, say that. Don't stand so close to me. Sting was a teacher in the UK for two years who taught 11-16 year olds. In an interview, he said the following. I wanted to write a song about sexuality in the classroom. I'd done teaching practice at secondary schools and been through the business of having 15 year old girls fancying me and me really fancying them. How I kept my hands off them I don't know. Then there was my love for Lolita which I think is a brilliant novel. But I was looking for the key for 18 months and suddenly there it was. That opened the gates and out it came. The teacher. The open page. The virgin. The Ari in the car. Getting the sack. Nabokov. All that. Yikes. How about the kid crying while getting a hug from a cop? He's wearing a free hug sign that his physically and mentally abusive mothers forced him to wear to a Michael Brown rally. Years later they drove off a cliff with their whole family in the minivan. They'd been abusing their adopted family four years prior. Not a recording, but a pretty terrifying picture that gets circle jerked all over the internet without the real story. There's a scene in Scarface where Tony et al. are upstairs in an apartment while Manny is supposed to keep watch from his car, the now the leg scene. Manny gets distracted by a blonde girl in a bikini and starts hitting on her. Meanwhile she's getting crazy for Tony. It's a disturbing scene. But there's also an even more disturbing backstory behind something seemingly innocuous, the blonde girl, who was Tammy Lynn Leopard. Tammy Lynn was a Florida beauty queen and model who, near the time of shooting the movie, went to a party and didn't come back the same person. It's like she changed overnight. While shooting, she saw a blood packet get activated during filming and freaked out. She was released from the film and began showing major signs of paranoia. She claimed she saw something she shouldn't have, but wouldn't say what, fearing some unknown person would kill her. She became almost a total shut-in and was suddenly argumentative quick to anger. Then, one day, she went for a drive with a friend and never came home. The friend says they got into an argument and she got out of the car, multiple miles from her home, barefoot, and refused to get back in. Nobody has seen her since. That's a very brief retelling, but it is a crazy, crazy story and I always think of that bring it up to whoever I'm with when I'm flipping through the channels and see that movie on. George Carlin's special I kind like it when a lot of people die filmed on the 10th of September, 2001. The last video of the guy who made Temple OS, it's a tragic story already, but a few hours after that he got run over by a train. There was a comment I replied to about this but it was deleted. A lot of people probably remember Minecraft Family, a wholesome YouTube series in the early days of Minecraft where a family, the son, the person who made the videos, his dad and sister, would play together. It was funny and a great part of my childhood. I went to rewatch the series and some comments were referring to a Draw My Life video he made which revealed his father was actually very abusive to his mother and himself during those times. And that playing Minecraft was the only time his family felt normal. That broke my heart and I couldn't watch the series or see it the same way. The family movie The Adventures of Milo and Otis. It's a live action movie about a dog and a cat. The filmmakers abuse the animals. Even killed some in order to get their shot. This old man singing Pretty Woman is a registered sex offender, I think. Who wasn't supposed to have a YouTube channel. When his channel was discovered. He was put back in prison where he passed away. Here's a really good one. This cop is giving advice on how to stay safe and avoid becoming victims of a crime. He talks with a reporter about how anything could happen being a female you could be a red. Robbed if you're a male. Well it turns out that the cop is none other than Craig Pyre. Who three days after recording this video. Murders Kara not after pulling her over. It was found out through the investigation that Pyre had a history of targeting women and making predatory sexual advances on several female drivers. Peanut butter jelly time. The guy was killed in a standoff with police and was Snoop Dogg's brother-in-law, who tried to de-escalate him during the incident. There is a photo of a girl and her mother on a plane. The plane they were on was Malaysia Airlines flight MH17. Flight 17 was later shot down by a missile over the Ukraine. There were no survivors, 
Another picture from Flight 17 was a boy and his mother just before takeoff. Another picture is of the plane before takeoff with the caption if the plane disappears. This is what it looks like. The reason the guy said this was because 4 months earlier Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 vanished while going to China. This video of this guy getting a strike at a bowling alley and showing it off. But he's the guy that killed the old man on Facebook live by shooting him in the head because his girlfriend Joy Lane broke up with him. So I wouldn't call this innocent, but surprising. A news reporter is interviewing Stephen McDaniel about a missing woman, Lauren Gidding. During the interview the reporter tells him that a body was found, turns out to be her body, and McDaniel just kind of mentally shuts off. That would kind of be a normal reaction. Finding out an acquaintance of yours is missing, and then a body is found in the area where she disappeared. The kicker is, that McDaniel is the one who murdered and hid Jidding's body, and he's coming to the realization that the police found her and he's officially effed. Definitely eerie. Any of the recordings of Jim Jones at his interracial church. If he had been hit by a car before he went to CA he would have been looked up to as one of the early civil rights activists. It's crazy to me how someone who was calling for unity between people could end up as one of the most awful cult leaders in recent history. Look up the Hart family crash. One of the victims was a child who had been in a viral video photo for hugging a cop during a police brutality protest and later was murdered by his parents after years of horrific abuse. The interaction looks a whole lot more like a child desperately in need of help rather than the feel-good moment it was made out to be at the time. The Watts family murder always gets me. When the story was first kicking up, Chris Watts was interviewed and I remember watching it feeling sympathetic but uncomfortable. It was a husband father wishing for his wife and two daughters to be safe. However, his general coolness put me off. After, he was perpetrated for their murder. The interview is so incredibly unsettling, it's awkward and unnerving watching it a second time around. Then it gets worse and worse after every time you rewatch it. The Apollo 1 audio recording. Skip to at 30, 11 it's the last moments where the astronauts are screaming about a fire in the cockpit. For context, the Apollo 1 disaster happened in the 60s where three astronauts died in a cabin fire couldn't open the hatch to get out. Basically anything with Shirley Temple she's over specialized and always singing to a bunch of men that pick her up. It's creepy. She was also treated terribly on set. There's one of a girl with her dad and her sister on the forest. The girl is doing a typical home video and the sister tells her Sarah. Dad's a pervert the dad then takes the camera. Sister went missing years later. That man is the principal suspect. There's a video on YouTube called She's Still Sleeping. A vlogger recorded his wife, thinking that she was asleep, and making comments about how odd it was for her to still be asleep. It turns out she had actually died in her sleep, and the vlogger recorded her completely unknowing. The kid partying with his dead parents in the next room. So dark. Lemon stealing whores. The weird porn intro got big a while ago because of its bad acting and overall comedic effect but I like the director got high on heroin and murdered the female lead sometime after filming. I saw a low quality video that first showed a street from the view of a balcony. Then the camera shook rapidly. Then it ended showing a mirror. I found out about this before but. The video was footage from a liver stream that a 13 year old girl recorded of her committing suicide. The camera shaking was the phone falling from her hands as she jumped off of her balcony onto the street. The phone ended up in the room because it fell back into it. That part in Super Size Me where they are talking about how Jared Fogel is good with kids. It was on an old episode of Oprah, way before I was born. But it was featured in the anniversary box set. This mom had made several recordings of essentially mom tutorials for her daughter, which is really sweet. But it was because she was diagnosed with cancer and she was expected to die when her daughter was 3. Her daughter said she watched them throughout her entire childhood and still plays them when she feels like she needs her mom around. This scene from The Simpsons, Phil Hartman's last bit on the show before he was brutally killed by his wife. I hate myself for spending 2 hours of my night scrolling through this thread. Now I can't sleep and I'm terrified of everything. Since pictures are being mentioned, there's the one of John Lennon signing one of his albums for a fan whom you can see in the background. Hours later, the fan murdered Lennon.